with us who were referred here by other people who don't worship here and have never even been here but said, you know, you ought to go check out Harvest Time Church. One of our friends found us one day when she was driving down 684 and there was a little construction out by exit 2 and someone changed lanes and forced her right off the exit ramp at exit 2 and she was a little frazzled so she decided to come down King Street rather than go back on the highway and she came past our building and when she did something said to her go inside and check it out. Although she had grown up in church when she came in she found Jesus in a new way. One of my favorite stories is from a family who was relocating to Greenwich and they came across harvest time while they were riding around with their realtor. When they rode past the building, they asked, what kind of church is that? And the realtor said, oh, you know, they're those born agains. And they thought to themselves, that's great. That's just the kind of church we're looking for. But they decided to have a little fun with the realtor. So they asked, what does that mean? And she said, oh, you know, they're those people who always say, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, we certainly don't want to shatter anyone's stereotypes of us. So for all the realtors out there in Greenwich, I want you to give me a great big praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Born again. People have all different ideas about what that means. But you know, the only thing that really matters is what Jesus meant by it. In John chapter 3, a man named Nicodemus came to visit Jesus one night. Nicodemus was one of the most powerful religious leaders in Jerusalem. He anticipated having a dialogue with Jesus about religion. But instead, Jesus began to talk about personal transformation. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. As I look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 3, I find three things that born again means, and I want to share them with you quickly on this Easter Sunday morning. Three things that born again means. First of all, born again means to be born from above. Like so many words in the Gospel of John, born again has a double entendre, it has a double meaning. It can either mean to be born anew, or it can mean to be born from above. And being born again is both of those things. John chapter 1 says that being born again means to receive life from God. He came into the world. And though the world was made through him, the world didn't acknowledge him. He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. Yet to all those that did receive him, to those that believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, born again. To be born again means to experience spiritual birth. It means to be fathered by God. Just like my earthly father is the source of my physical life, God becomes the source of my spiritual life. By his power, I am born into a new relationship with him. I become his child and he becomes my father. It means that I now have an organic connection with him. I have an unbreakable bond of kinship with him. Jesus said, you must be born again. The only way to have a relationship with God is to personally experience this spiritual birth. Nicodemus was born Jewish. He believed that by being born Jewish, he was automatically born into a relationship with God. But Jesus said, that's not the way it works. Beloved, you cannot be born into a relationship with God by physical birth. You cannot be physically born into being a true follower of Jesus. You cannot be physically born into being a genuine disciple, an authentic Christian. Being born into an Italian family makes you Italian, but it does not automatically make you a child of God, although it might give you an edge. <laughs> being born into an Irish family makes you Irish, but it does not automatically make you a child of God. Being born into a Filipino family makes you Filipino, 
but it does not automatically make you a child of God. Being born into a Puerto Rican family makes you an awesome cook, but it does not automatically make you a child of God. You can be physically born into a religion, but you can't be physically born into a personal relationship with God. Being born into a Catholic family does not automatically make you a child of God or a Baptist family or a Methodist family or a Presbyterian family or a Lutheran family. Being born into Harvest Time Church does not make you automatically saved. Attending Harvest Time Church does not make you automatically saved, but it will greatly increase your odds. You may have been born into a Christian family, but the only way to become an authentic Christian yourself is to personally be born again. You can't be born into a relationship with God by a decision that your parents made on your behalf when you were a little baby. You can't be enrolled into a relationship with God by being enrolled in the Sunday school. You must be born again. You must personally connect with God and experience this spiritual birth. That moment came for me when I was eight years old. I still remember it vividly. I was born into a Christian family. We were God-fearing people, more or less, more on Sundays and less the other six days of the week. We went to church every week and they told us about God, but no one ever told us that we could know him personally. And then one day someone explained to me that I could be born again, that I could make a direct connection to God, that I could know him in a personal way, that I could experience his presence and hear his voice. I remember I responded to an altar call at a church service. And a little old lady who smelled like mothballs and peppermint came and put her arm around me and led me in a prayer. But you know, that wasn't really my moment. Later that night, all alone in my bed, I lifted my face to heaven and I said a simple prayer to God. It wasn't theologically precise. It wasn't eloquent, but I just said, Jesus, I want everything you have for me. Can't tell you that a light shone from heaven I can't tell you that my bed shook or that I heard the voice of God. I have had some pretty radical experiences since then, but not that night. But I can tell you that something happened to me in that moment. The beautiful presence of God came to me, and he has never left me since. If you've never had that experience you can make a direct connection with God today. Before we leave this service, I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer with me and you can become born again. Three things that born again means. Born again means to be born from above. Second, born again means to receive eternal life. Born again means to receive eternal life. There are three words for life in the Gospel of John. The first kind of life is bios. That's physical life, biology. Bios began the moment of conception in your mother's womb, and you became a living being. Bios is your beating heart. Bios is your physical body. Bios is your ability to see and hear and smell and taste and to touch. The second kind of life is psyche. Psyche is human consciousness. Psyche, psychology. Psyche also started in your mother's womb and it continues to develop your entire life. It's your ability to think. It's your ability to reason. It's your ability to perceive the world. It's your ability to choose. It's your ability to feel emotions, to empathize with others and to express yourself. Beloved, physically, your body bears similarities to other things that God has created. That is called intelligent design, but you are absolutely distinct in God's creation, first physically, but especially because of psyche. You are not a monkey's uncle. 
You are created in the image of God with the ability to create and feel and think and express. That is a gift from Jesus expressly bestowed upon mankind. He is the true light that gives the light of human consciousness to every man. I think, therefore, he is. Now follow this this morning. From your parents, you received bios and psyche. Your parents gave birth to a person. Jesus said, flesh gives birth to flesh. Flesh gives birth to bios and psyche. But there is a third kind of life in the Gospel of John, and that is zoe. Zoe is spiritual life. Zoe is the ability to know God. Zoe is the ability to perceive his existence. It's the ability to experience his presence. It's the ability to comprehend him and communicate with him. Zoe is the ability to perceive spiritual realities and understand spiritual truths. Just like you perceive the natural world with your mind and with your senses, bios and psyche, you perceive the spiritual world with Zoe. But listen to me this morning, unlike bios and psyche, you do not get zoe from your parents. In fact, you cannot get zoe from your parents. Flesh only gives birth to flesh. Flesh only gives birth to bios and psyche. God created Adam in his, in, in his own image from the dust of the earth. And God breathed the breath of life into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul bios and psyche and zoe. Adam was physically alive. He was cognitively and emotionally alive, volitionally alive, and he was spiritually alive. But God told Adam not to eat the fruit of a certain tree in the garden. For in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. But the serpent came along and he said, don't you worry, Adam, enjoy. You shall not surely die. So Adam disobeyed God. If you want to know what original sin was, it was disbelief. Adam didn't believe the word of God. He ate the fruit and he remained alive. His heart was still beating. His mind was still thinking. His emotions were still feeling. Actually, they were feeling rather guilty. He could still create and procreate. Adam was still alive physically and mentally, but spiritually he died. And the whole human race with him. His vital connection to God was severed. He lost the ability to perceive spiritual realities and understand spiritual truths. And Adam started to die a slow death in his soul. Dysfunction entered the first family, and Adam started to die a slow death in his body, aging and sickness, and eventually the grave. That's what Paul means when he says, in Adam all died. Sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. In this way, death came to all men. So listen, track with me on Easter Sunday morning. You were born physically and mentally alive, but you were born spiritually dead. You were born without the ability to perceive and experience the physical world. That's what Paul means when he says you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but now Jesus Christ has made you spiritually alive. There is only one place that you can get this third kind of life, this zoe, and that is from God through Jesus Christ. Flesh can only give birth to flesh, but the Holy Spirit must give life to the Spirit. Born again is what happens when you receive Zoe. It means that you become alive in all the ways that God created you to be alive. Alive in your body, alive in your soul, and alive in your spirit. And here's the really cool thing about Zoe. This spiritual life is eternal life. The moment that you receive Jesus, you receive this Zoe, this spiritual life, and Zoe keeps right on going even when your physical life runs out. 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. One day if Jesus tarries, every one of us will leave this world through the doorway called death. But to those who have been born again, to those that have received Zoe, who have received eternal life, they will go right on living without even skipping a beat. You know, we don't have to wonder what it'll be like when our physical body dies. The New Testament tells us exactly what it will be like. Our spirit and our soul will go right on living without skipping a beat. In the blink of an eye, we'll shut our eyes in this world and we'll open them in the next. I was working on my laptop recently, and I noticed as I was working along that the battery was beginning to run low. First, the battery icon lit up red in the corner of my screen, and then it started flashing at me. And because I was sitting cozy in front of my fire, I didn't get up right away until finally a message window popped up in the middle of my work. Get up now, dummy, and plug in, or you're going to lose all your work. So I got up, and when I plugged in, the computer immediately started drawing that AC. And it went right on running without even skipping a beat. The programs I was running didn't even flicker. I was connected to the internet, and the Wi-Fi didn't even flicker. And that's exactly what will happen at death to everyone who believes in Jesus. Beloved, listen to me. Eventually, your battery, it will poop up, poop out. <laughs> Some of you have a, a full charge. Mine's about halfway through, but eventually your battery is going to run low. But your hard drive will keep right on running. There will be an instantaneous switchover to an endless supply of life and power. Your conscious mind won't skip a beat. And I want you to notice with me that you don't receive that eternal life at the moment your body dies. Jesus gives you that eternal life the moment you become born again. If you're a believer in Jesus this morning, you are already in possession of that eternal life. And because we're already in possession of that life, death is merely a doorway from this world to the next. Three things that born again means. Born again means to be born from above. Born again means to receive eternal life. And finally, born again means to get a fresh start in life. Born again means to get a fresh start in life. Born again means to be born from above, and it means to be born anew. Jesus said everyone who is born again is born of water and the Spirit. Water describes his cleansing. And spirit describes his renewal and his regeneration. To be born again means to experience a radical inner transformation. It is to be recreated. It is under, to undergo an extreme makeover character edition. It's to become altered in your essential being. If you were with us on Friday evening, one of the highlights of the whole night to me was when our friend Dave DePolito shared his testimony. He talked about a radical change that happened in his heart two years ago at the same Good Friday service after 37 years of being away from the Lord. You know, that's a change that I have seen happen hundreds of times, and as many times as I have seen it, it never gets old. I've seen haters become lovers. I've seen abrasive people become gentle. I've seen abusive people become healers. I've seen selfish people become selfless. I've seen addicted people become free indeed. I've seen unfaithful people become devoted. Once a cheater, always a cheater, but not a cheater anymore if you become born again. I've seen anxious people become secure in Christ. I have seen stingy people become generous. Now there's a real miracle. <laughs> Beloved, Jesus is the only one that can give you the opportunity to make a fresh start in life. 
so many people today are in search of a fresh start. So they search out new romantic relationships. They search out new employment. They search out a, a new city or a new part of the country. How many couples have I counseled over the years who decide they're going to try and strengthen their marriage bond by having a, a baby or another baby? Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense because everyone knows marriage is so much easier when kids come along. No stress there at all. <laughs> what they're looking for is a fresh start. The problem with all those scenarios is you take you with you. And you're the problem. The problem is not your partner or your employer or your postal address. The problem is you. You need a fresh start in here before you can ever make a fresh start out there. But how can this be? Nicodemus had a very hard time believing that it was really possible to be born again. He spent an entire lifetime studying religion. He was as devout and as sincere and as zealous as anyone could be, but his lifetime of experience had left him jaded. It's impossible for people to change. It's impossible for a leopard to change its spots. Nicodemus' response to Jesus was tongue in cheek. Born again? Oh, if it were only possible. Oh, for a man to rise up in me that the man I am might cease to be. Born again, Jesus. You might as well tell me, a full-grown man, to go back into my mother's womb and be born a second time. Three times Nicodemus asks Jesus, how can this be? How can this be? How can this be? And Jesus tells him how it's possible. First of all, it's possible because of the cross of Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus neutralized sin's venom. Jesus told, Nicod told Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross that everyone who believes in him will have everlasting life. In the book of Numbers, while the children of Israel were crossing the desert, they got impatient with the journey, and they didn't like the cafeteria food. So they complained against the Lord and Moses. And the Lord sent venomous serpents into the camp. They began to bite the people, and the people got sick and began to die. And they repented, and they said to Moses, Moses, pray for us, we blew it. And God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and to raise it up on a pole. And for everyone who looked up to God in faith, for everyone who looked at that serpent and realized the ugliness of his own sin, the venom was neutralized. And that is a picture of what Jesus did on the cross. When Jesus was lifted up on the cross, all of sin's venom was placed upon him. Beloved, listen to me. The horrific, ugly, bloody spectacle of the cross shows each one of us the ugliness of our sin. The truth is, if we see an even remotely accurate depiction of how horrific it was, we have to turn our faces away. Isaiah said he had no beauty or majesty to attract us, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. We hid our faces from him. Sin is ugly. All oh, we, like sheep, we've gone our own way, we've turned everyone astray, but the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. It wasn't the serpent that saved them, but the serpent's power was broken when it was lifted up. And when Jesus was lifted up on the cross with the sins of the whole world upon him, the power of the serpent, the devil was broken and sin's venom was neutralized. That is why the radical, personal, 
transformation that had eluded Nicodemus his entire life is now possible for you and for me. Sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. In this way, death came to all men, but God's gift has come by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, and it has overflowed, bringing life to many. Through the cross and the resurrection, Jesus undid death. And when I become born again, he undoes death in me. First spiritually, and then in my soul, and even in my body, I experience his healing power. And one day he will raise my body up, an immortal, glorified body of flesh, where I will live with him forever. How is it possible? How can it be? How can I be born again? Jesus says it's possible because of the cross of Jesus Christ. And secondly, it's possible by the indescribable work of the Holy Spirit. I can't really explain to you how the Holy Spirit washes someone and makes him new, but I've seen him do it over and over and over again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the wind blows. You can't see it. You don't know where it's come from. You don't know where it's going, but you can hear it and you can see it and feel its effects. So it is with everyone born again by the Spirit of God. I can't really explain to you how the Holy Spirit washes guilt off of a man, but I know that he does. I can't really explain how he removes shame from somebody's conscience, but I know that he does. I can't really explain how he transforms someone's inner character, but I know that he does. I don't know how he sets people free in their innermost being, but I know that he does. In Bible college days, Denise had a roommate named Gloria. Gloria grew up, grew up outside of Albany. She came from a large family. Her father was an alcoholic, and he was a mean drunk. He was physically abusive. From the time Gloria was a little girl, he would come home in the middle of the night drunk, and he would get the entire family out of bed and beat all of them. Gloria had an older brother whose face was permanently disfigured because one night he dove through a second floor window just to escape his father's rage. When Gloria was a teenager, her dad accepted Christ. He was delivered from alcoholism and the whole family came to Jesus, but for Gloria, the damage had been done. Even though she loved the Lord, she still had lots of issues. She was emotionally a very detached person. She had a hard time letting people get close to her. She was very cool. She was also a control freak. She was a very pretty girl. But she was obsessed with always being perfect. She always had to be together. No one could ever see her in her sweats or with her hair a mess or her makeup off. One day, the Holy Spirit began moving in a powerful way in the college chapel. Students began to come to the altar to pray, and one of them was Gloria. And the Holy Spirit began doing his indescribable work. Denise said that at one point, Gloria let out a blood-curdling scream, and she collapsed on the floor like someone dead. People came around her and started to pray for her, and she remained there on the floor for a few hours. And finally, Gloria, who was always in control, who was always proper, who was always put together, picked herself up off the floor. She was a mess. Her hair was all over. Her makeup had run all over her face. Her clothes were rumpled. But it didn't matter because she was a completely transformed person. Her face was soft and she was smiling. Her heart was healed. She was able to let people in. All the damage that had been done in her heart for all those years of nighttime terror was undone in that moment by the indescribable work of the Holy Spirit. Gloria and her husband are pastors today in Maine. We're friends on Facebook. How can this be? 
How is it possible to be born again? It's possible because of the cross of Jesus and by the indescribable work of the Holy Spirit. There's one more thing that I need to share with you on this Easter Sunday morning. And that's this. You can be born again. You can be born again. Pastor Jason, you can come. Worship team, you can come. You can be born from above. You can experience this spiritual birth. By the power of God, you can be born into a relationship with Him where you become His child and He becomes your Father. You can receive eternal life. You can become alive in every way that God created you to be alive, in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit. You can make a fresh start on life. You can experience this radical inner transformation. It really is possible because of the cross of Jesus and by the indescribable work of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 1 tells us how you can be born again. Jesus came into the world. And though the world was made by him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own, but his own didn't receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the power to become born again. You can become born again today by receiving Jesus. Receive Jesus. Jesus' words about himself. Beloved, can I tell you, the fact that you're sitting here in this church on Easter Sunday morning, 2,000 years after the life and death and resurrection of Jesus is proof that he was no ordinary man. He was not just a Jewish teacher. He was not just a moral philosopher. He, he was not just a social reformer. He was not just a prophet or healer. He is the Lamb of God. He is the living bread that came down from heaven. He is the light of the world. He is the doorway to salvation. He is the beautiful shepherd. He is the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. He is the true vine. Receive Jesus' words about Himself and receive Jesus' words about yourself. James says humbly, receive the word of God, for it is able to save your souls. Confess that you need him. Confess that you need his help. Confess that you need his forgiveness. Your sin is ugly. Confess that you need his power to change inside. Confess that you need his guidance and his salvation. Jesus said, unless you humble yourself, you become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Receive Jesus into your heart. Invite him in. Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone will open the door to me, I will come in and have fellowship. Do you have your yellow ribbon from uh, Friday evening with you this morning? I talked about tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. I got a message from someone Saturday morning. They said, Pastor, we're looking forward to next year's Good Friday sermon called Knock Three Times. Based on Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. You can be born again by receiving Jesus. And you can be born again by believing in Jesus. He came unto his own. His own did not receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed on his name. He gave the power to become born again. Believing on Jesus means you reach a critical moment of decision. Faith is born in your heart. You become convinced in the deepest place inside that Jesus is alive. Believing in Jesus means that you entrust your life to his leadership. You trust that his way is best. It means you follow his lead. You listen to him. You obey his voice. It means to trust the rest of your life to him. This is Resurrection Sunday. 
Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, and because he did, you can rise from the dead too. You can be born again. Would you stand on your feet this morning and would you give the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, a great big praise with me in this place. Come on, we can do a little better than that. Let's give Jesus a great big praise. Let's give Jesus a great big praise. Hallelujah. Come on, would you lift up your voice? I'll never know how much it cost. a big praise in this place, church. Hallelujah. 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 We're so glad that you joined us on this Easter weekend. Just one moment, we're going to conclude our service. I'd like to invite you to go down to the courtyard, enjoy some Easter bread, some coffee. Just before we leave this place, I have to ask one question. Would you bow your heads all over this place with me this morning? Beloved, on the other side of this life, there is an eternity to spend. I believe in the resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Each one of us must stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for ourselves. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that, the judgment. You're not here by mistake this morning. It's not an accident. We've prayed for you. God knew you'd be here. God sees you right where you are. This is the question that I have to ask you this morning. Have you been born again? Have you experienced this spiritual birth? Have you received this zoe, this eternal life? One day your heart, your battery, it will poop out. But your hard drive will keep right on running if you have this eternal life. Do you need a fresh start? It really is possible. It's possible to receive his cleansing. The Bible says that God is able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save completely those who come to him through Jesus. That means there's no mess that you have gotten yourself into in life that it's not possible for God to clean you up from and deliver you from. Have you experienced this indescribable work of the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, you must be born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
for someone here this morning, today is your day. It's time to receive Jesus. It's time to accept his words about himself. It's time to humbly accept his words about yourself. It's time to invite Jesus into your heart. While heads are bowed all over this place, if you want to pray a prayer with me this morning to become born again, I want to lead you in that prayer. I'm going to ask you to do something very bold this morning. I'm going to ask you in just one moment to get out of your seat and to come down the aisle and to come stand here at the altar to pray a prayer with me in front of all these people. What Jesus did on the cross, he did for the whole world to see. God lifted him up on a tree for the whole world to see it. If you want to be born again, if you want to receive that eternal life, if you want to make that fresh start on life, it's possible, it's here. Just one moment, when I say come to Jesus, I want you to get out of your seat and I want you to come right down here to the front and some of our friends are going to meet you right here. If you've come with somebody today, if you're someone's guest, if someone invited you and you want them to walk with you, I want you to just squeeze their hand and I want you to just let them know that you, you want them to walk with you. When I say come to Jesus, I want you to get out of your seat and come right now. Are you ready? Come on, this is the best Easter ever of your life. This is the best day. Something's going to happen. The kingdom of God is about to open up in this place. God is about to come down in a powerful wave of his presence. Are you set? Let's do this. Would you come to Jesus right now? Come on, get out of your seat and come to Jesus right now. Come on, give these folks a hand while they're coming. Prayer teams, come if you would. Come on, who else wants to come? Come on, there's some more people coming. Come to Jesus right now. Awesome, God bless you. Come on, come on down and come to Jesus right now. Here comes some more people. Come to Jesus right now. Come on, come on down. Prayer teams, come give these people a big hug. Come on, give some praise while they're coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's sing Here I Am to Worship. who wants to come. There's still plenty of room down here. Who else wants to come to Jesus? You can still get out of your seat and come right now. There's still some people coming. Come on right now. Come on, prayer teams, pastors, come help. Here I am to say you're my God. Dad, would you come? You're all together lovely all together Sing, here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together. I'll never know how much it costs. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that. Come on, I'll never know. I'll never know how much it costs to see. Yeah. Uh -huh.
on, church. Would you just give the Lord a big praise in this place? Hallelujah. 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 I want to ask everyone here if you'd lift up your arms to the Lord. And I'm going to lead us all in a prayer. If you're already born again, I want you to pray that prayer again with me. You know what? Every time I pray that prayer, it brings me back to that moment when I was eight years old, when the beautiful presence of Jesus came to me and he's never left me. Listen, this is a glorious day. The kingdom of God is here today. Angels are celebrating today. Your life is never going to be the same after this moment. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I want everyone to pray after me, and we're going to receive Christ. Mm, something's going to happen. Something's going to shake in this place. I feel like somebody, you're going to feel like something just a, has a grip around your insides. It's just going to let go of you when we pray this prayer. Let's pray. Lift up your hands. Everybody pray with me. Father, thank you for loving me. Father, thank you for sending your only son. Jesus, thank you for coming. You lived for me. You died on the cross for me. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you rose from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I need you. I need your cleansing. I need your washing. I need your renewing. I need your restoring. I need your indescribable work. Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and the leader of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you that are here, I want you to stay until we give you something. We have a box and it has some things that are going to help you get started in your new walk with Jesus. Now listen, uh, if you've just come today, I want you to come for coffee on Wednesday evening. We promise we're going to give Pastor Kevin decaf on Wednesday. And I want we want to meet you. We want to celebrate with you. And we want to share with you more about Harvest Time Church. Fresh look at Jesus. The Bible, Christianity and the church starts every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. All right, I'm going to lead us in a closing prayer. And then I want you to let me get to the back door so I can greet everybody on the way out. And after we've sung, you can go. Take somebody's hand next to you and let's give thanks. Father, we thank you now, Lord, for your presence here in this place. Thank you, Lord, for those who have been born again today. God, I pray in Jesus' name that the good work that you've started this moment, Lord, that you'd be faithful to bring through to completion. I pray that the power of God, Lord, would fall down on these precious sons and daughters, Lord. I pray that you'd make everything new, God. I pray that every obstacle of the enemy, Lord, would be shattered off of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, as we go our own way today, I pray that the cloud of your presence would envelop us. Pray that your protection would surround us. Pray that your provision would accompany us and your providence lead us until we come together again. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing one more time and then you may go. God bless you. You live, you die, you rise again. Oh.